Before the limit of proportionality, the extension of a spring is proportional to the force applied. So we can create a force extension graph by plotting extension on the y-axis and force on the x-axis. This graph shows that the force and extension are proportional, as if we were to double one of the values, the other one also doubles. The limit of proportionality is the force after which inelastic deformations occur, and force and extension are not proportional after this limit, as the extension increases much more quickly. So how can we use this graph to figure out the spring constant? Well, the gradient of the graph is equal to the reciprocal of the spring constant of the spring. Now, in this slide, we will explain that sentence step by step. So we can calculate the gradient of the graph by choosing two points and then finding the difference in y and the difference in x. So the gradient is simply the difference in y over the difference in x. Or in this case, the gradient is the difference in e over the difference in f. Before the limit of proportionality, f is equal to ke, where k is the spring constant or stiffness. So k is simply equal to f over e. So all we need to do is flip the gradient to get the equation for k. And this is what we mean by the reciprocal. In an exam, if you're asked to calculate a spring constant from a graph, you need to use this method. Let's have a look at an example. During an experiment, various weights are hung from a spring with its extension measured. The results are plotted on a force extension graph. Using the graph, calculate the spring constant of the spring to two significant figures. So this is one way we can measure the spring constant of a spring. So for step one, let's choose two suitable points on the graph. For the first point, the force is equal to 7.5 newtons and the extension is 0.9 meters. For the second point, the force is equal to 2.5 newtons and the extension 0.3 meters. Now these points are good sensible choices as they are easy to read and they're far apart. Then in step two, we divide the difference in force by the difference in extension. And this is because the spring constant K is equal to F divided by E. So it becomes 7.5 minus 2.5 divided by 0.9 minus 0.3. And that gives us 8.333 recurring. Then for step three, we need to round and give the correct units for the calculated spring constant. So that becomes 8.3 to two significant figures and it's measured in newtons per meter. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE physics course. See you there.